All right, what's up, guys? Good Thursday, and with Thursday comes pass coverage Thursday. So let's uh, take a look here. Let's see who's getting beat in coverage. Let's see who's not getting beat in coverage and see if we can learn anything from it. So this last game against the Falcons, I have good news and I have bad news. The good news is we really didn't get ripped up that badly in pass coverage overall. It, it really wasn't too bad in terms of volume. Um, no one player with maybe one exception got really badly toasted out there. No one player was giving up the whole world to the other team. And most of these numbers are going to look fairly respectable. The bad news is it's because we couldn't stop the run at all. <laughs> so it wasn't necessarily because of anything good. But nevertheless, let's uh, talk about this. Let's break it down here. And we're going to start with a very rare sight and a real oddity. Jordan Brooks, according to PFR, and... I think PFR gets things wrong sometimes, so maybe there's some discrepancy here. According to PFR, Jordan Brooks did not get targeted in coverage once this whole game, so his numbers were unchanged from last week, and hey, for a guy who makes a living getting destroyed in coverage, for him to not get targeted once, I will call that a step in the right direction. Now, was it because there were other people who were providing relatively soft targets? Sure, sometimes. But look, one of the things we need to do with Jordan Brooks is get him to have to cover less. That's not his strength as a player. We need to try to maximize what makes him good and minimize what makes him bad. So if we're taking him out of those situations, then that's a really good thing. So I'm going to call that a positive. Cody Barton was only targeted once. He gave up one completion in this game. Now, if we check the edit history here, you can see it was for a 22-yard 22, yeah, 22 pickup. So, relatively big play. And his numbers on this year are still abysmal. But, hey, for this week, our linebackers didn't get picked on that badly. Or at least the usual suspects didn't, right? More on that in a second here. Uh, Daryl Taylor was targeted once and gave up one completion for five yards, so that's whatever. Uh, Nwosu was not targeted, Balor was not targeted, and Mafe was actually targeted three times, which, um, screen passes, man, I, I guess. I mean, uh, this kind of surprised me. I didn't expect it based off the game. Three targets, three completions for 43 yards. Obviously, when you have a screen pass that gets sprung for a long gain, it's bad for your... It's bad for your coverage metrics, and it's not totally your fault. But there it is, 43 yards allowed in one game. Okay, so the linebackers didn't get destroyed. What about the cornerbacks? Well, only three played, really. Uh, Woolen continues to play really well. He gave up a couple completions in this game, but he's still only at 90 yards allowed through three games, and almost half of those yards actually came in this game. So, while we can look at this and go, oh, he, he gave up a little bit more in this game, we have to remember he got an interception. He actually made a play on the ball. And that is something that has been missing in uh, Seattle a lot s lately. From the corners in particular, last year it took how long for our corners to come away with interceptions? Um, how many interceptions did we have from our cornerbacks total last year? It was mostly just digs, right? It was mostly digs. Not a lot of corner stuff. So the fact that we saw Woolen make a great play on a ball, and I know it was the last play of the half, it didn't mean that much, but it was still a nice play. And if he's going to get beat once or twice in a game, like he did in this game, he gave up a couple catches. It wasn't terribly inefficient. And through three games, you're looking at it and you're going, you've allowed a grand total of 90 yards in coverage. The penalties are unfortunate, but it makes sense that a guy with this level of inexperience would have that problem. And overall, you're looking at a player who clearly belongs in the NFL right now, which I don't think I was expecting at all, really. So Michael Jackson was one guy who got um, beat up a little bit after and during that game because he did not have a good game in coverage. Uh, if you actually look at the numbers on PFR, they're not as bad as I thought. He gave up a grand total of 44 yards in coverage, gave up a few completions. Overall, still playing well this season. Mostly it was just a couple big plays, and realistically, Atlanta, while they don't have a great offense, they do have Kyle Pitts. He's a matchup nightmare. 
he's going to make your corners look bad sometimes. So I'm not here to exoriate him. At the end of the day, he's given us three pretty decent games overall. The penalties are bad, like Woolen, but we may as well stick with this for the time being. If, if, if Michael Jackson turns into a starting caliber outside cornerback for us, then that is a tremendous amount of value that is added in a, from a place that I didn't think we were getting, getting anything from. Uh, Kobe Bryant actually only allowed one completion in this game for five yards. So we're, we're trending in the right direction with Kobe. I know he got a terrible PFF grade for other reasons, but Kobe did not get destroyed in coverage in this game at all, as near as I can tell. So um, I, 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 it's a step in the right direction. He still needs to improve as a player. I mean, you know it's bad when your coverage is fairly clean and you get a sack, but PFF still thinks you're one of the worst players in the league. So there's stuff to work on. But much better game in coverage, and that gets you to the safeties. And this is the one guy who really got beat up out there. No, I'm not talking about Quandre Diggs. Quandre Diggs was not credited with any targets against in that game from PFR. So his really impressive coverage year holds. D Diggs is having some problems out there. But I they don't have anything to do with his coverage metrics. They have to do with his tackling. And frankly... It's hard for me to get that upset at him. I, I know how good Quandre Diggs is, and I look at all this incompetency in front of him, and I have to think to myself, you know what? Um, I, I can't put that on Diggs. I don't think I can put that on Diggs. So it's not Diggs. It's Josh Jones. And if there's one guy on this defense who maybe we're headed towards a point where he's going to be kind of a lost cause, it might be Josh Jones. He just looks slow. Sometimes he looks very lackadaisical out there. He's not really bringing anything to the table. I know he was a training camp darling, but if this team wanted to bring in a guy like a Jaquizzi Tart or a Landon Collins, I would have no problem with it because right now I'm looking at Josh Jones and I'm trying to figure out how he becomes a good enough player to hang with some of these NFL offenses, and I don't know if I see it. So in this game, he was targeted just three times, but he allowed three completions, and they were pretty much all big plays. If you look at the numbers, um, according to PFR, at least, he gave up nearly 70 yards in this game in coverage and a touchdown. And for a safety, that's bad. That's a problem. Like, safeties typically don't give up these kinds of numbers in one game in coverage. So his uh, QB rating against is up to 125 almost. And he's the guy that I'm wondering, is he going to be the millstone? Is he going to be the bigger problem with this defense that doesn't get better? A lot of these pieces, even the ones that aren't playing great right now, I like. I see the potential. I see where they can be good. But I got to tell you, the Josh Jones thing, I don't know. I liked him. I liked the things that I was hearing about him. But seeing him every snap in an NFL game this year, you, uh, you, you see why he bounced around the league and according by his own accord came very close to retiring this most recent offseason all right that's pass coverage thursday let me know what you guys think i will see you guys later today peace out go hawks